Hi, I'm Joanne Banco, author and online educator at letsgosew.com. I don't know about you, but one of the things I love most about sewing and creating things is being able to transform garments and take them from ordinary to extraordinary. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make this really beautiful textured fluffy um, collar from a very simple pattern that you're gonna make yourself to transform a very ordinary jacket, extend the seasons, and just dress it up a little bit. So in order to do that, I need to take the jacket off the dress form, and I'm gonna show you real quick how to make this pattern. I have started by preparing a surface here with a foam board, so just your standard foam board so that I can stick pins through it. I've got ordinary paper, you could use pattern tracing cloth, you could use you know, whatever, whatever works best for you, but you wanna be able to make several rough copies of your pattern before you get to the final one. I need a fashion ruler that has curves. I'm gonna need some pins and a pencil and of course scissors. So I'm gonna again make a very rough draft to start with. I'm just gonna take my jacket and I've already marked the center back I can only do a half a pattern at a time, and I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, you don't have to be very fussy with this. I made that, that fur collar very, very quickly. You're not making a pattern that's gonna be sewn to the jacket, it's just gonna lay right over. That fabric is soft, and it'll flow right over. So I'm pinning this jacket in place, because what I need to do is I need to get the curve of that neckline so that I get the basic shape for the curve of my pattern. So again, just stabbing some pins through there. I need to make sure that I do have the center back area um, on the paper. And I'm gonna stab another pin in there. All right, I'm good to go. Told you, rough draft. I'm gonna start just by sketching that. I wanna go just a little bit below the area where the, the first buttonhole is, so I make sure I completely cover that collar. All right, take that off. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the jacket back on the dress form, because we will do another step here in a minute where we have that on there. So let me get it buttoned up. While I'm buttoning it, let me tell you a couple other things. Another way to transform an ordinary garment is to simply go out and buy new buttons. So these had very, um, this jacket had very plain gray utilitarian buttons and I went out and just found something that really kind of went right with the fabric. All right, so can you see I've got my center line there, my rough draft. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna measure out from that center back, and I know I want my collar to be about six inches wide. How do I know that? Well, I looked at other ready-mades, and I also looked at other patterns that I had. And then I'm gonna taper it down to about three inches at the end, and I wanna round that off. So very simply, I'm just gonna match up those lines. Remember, we're just doing rough draft. I'm gonna go again from this curve. And by the way, these fashion rulers are actually the same type of fashion rulers that they use when they make patterns, whether they're patterns for ready-mades or whether they're patterns that you purchase. So these curves are kind of standard. So you can see I've just kind of mimicked that and widened that, tapered it at the bottom. So I'm gonna show you what my first draft looked like. A little bit messy, but I was able to take this and wrap it around the neckline and basically fine tune it. Because remember, I can only do half at a time. So I can't get the real true curve of that neckline when it's laying flat. You're really doing a little bit of kind of a draping technique, but it's a very, very simple one. So once I have that first draft on there, I saw that I needed to actually pinch this and I pleated the paper so that now I have made that curve um, hug the neck a little bit better. So my first messy one looked like this. My next one that I neatened up a little bit looked like this. So let me lay this here and you can actually see where I taped that, shaped it a little bit better, 
for the final one then, I traced it one more time, added just a little more of a gentle curve to that neck, and I ended up with, let's move this out of the way, I ended up with this one here. So you can see that is one full collar piece, nice and neat, nice and rounded. That's gonna be cut from my wonderful fluffy fashion fabric, and that's gonna be cut all in one piece. But I need a lining as well. So for the lining, I'm gonna just simply layer another pattern tracing cloth is what I used for this. I like this for the, um, the grids and the durability. And all I did was add a half inch seam allowance. I also then added, this collar looks a little bigger than this one, doesn't it? Yes, it does, because I added a half inch seam allowance all around the edge. I was only concerned about my finish size when I made my pattern. So now I'm good to go, I'm ready to cut out. This fabric is very forgiving and very easy to work with. It does shed a little bit though on the first time around, so once you cut it, it's gonna, it's gonna fluff off. You just wanna shake off all that extra hair and then it will quit, it'll quit shedding after that first time. And you're good to go and ready to sew. So you see I cut one full collar, one lining with the center back seam. Let's go over to the machine and let me show you how I actually sewed that. So I um, keep a lint roller handy, by the way, because you might get just a little, bit, a little bit messy there. And let's sit in front of the machine here, and let me tell you, first of all, what I did for uh, setup. I went ahead and changed from my ordinary presser foot to a foot that is a type of a walking foot, but it actually is belt driven. It's well designed for sewing two unlike fabrics, which is exactly what I have when I have my lining and my furry, fluffy, textured fabric, they behave a little bit differently. So a foot like this makes it very, very easy to sew those two layers. You do want to make sure you clip everything together. You can see I've used a combination of clips and a pin, you could pin the whole thing around, but I kind of like these clips because they're just really, really easy to use. And I'm gonna sew a half inch seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and wake up the machine. I only need a standard straight stitch, but I do want a little bit longer stitch length. Start anywhere, but start somewhere where you have a little bit of a, um, a straighter edge. And we'll get that presser foot lowered. And again, just simple, easy stitching. We're gonna go around that collar. One of the advantages of a foot like this is it can actually be changed in the machine to ease the fabric layer in from the top or from the bottom surface by changing how fast that, um, that uh, belt drive goes. So you may wanna do a, a sample, a scrap, do a little trial piece first and see if you need to make adjustment. I'm not gonna try to be too perfect here, but I'm gonna go around this collar. I will tell you that your layers may not be perfectly even. That's not a big deal. You just want a nice smooth seam, and when you get to the end, you can trim that all around. So we just guide that around. I do have this machine set for something called pivoting. So when I start to get to that curve, it'll stop. Presser foot raises up just a little bit so that I can move, maneuver around. And the sharper the curve, the more maneuvering you're gonna have to do because you want that to be nice and smooth. If you really wanna make um, that easy, you could consider marking that curve from your pattern. So I'm gonna go all the way around. I wanna get back to this back seam because when I sewed the back seam before I layered these two together, I forgot to tell you what I did here, I actually left an opening. So I'm gonna put my finger in there in just a minute. Right there, do you see that? I left an opening because that's where the collar gets turned through. So again, I would go all the way around. I would take my time, I would do this nice and neat. And when I get done, let's go ahead and take this one out because I have one already finished for you. I would have everything sewn around. Let's flip this out just so that you can see it. All the way around the whole collar, I've got my 
opening in the center back. And you can also see that I've done a little bit of clipping in that curved area, and then I could very easily trim that seam allowance down. This fabric is so forgiving, it just floats in, in the inside. It doesn't have any stiffness, and it really, really, um, you know, makes it nice on the inside as well as the outside. So let's go back over to the dress form. Let's take one more little um, look at that, and I'll tell you just a couple more things on the jacket. We want to get this draped around so that you can see how pretty that is. By the way, this fabric is washable, which also makes it very, very nice for adding to um, a garment that maybe I would normally have to dry clean. The area where it's gonna go around my neck is gonna be washable. I do wanna secure this, so I just used a very large hook and eye. I'm able to clip that together, drape that over, and voila, doesn't that dress that up? transform this jacket from something ordinary to extraordinary. So let's look a little bit at the, at the lining. Look how smooth that is. That silky polyester lining goes very nice with the textured fabric. You could take the same uh, furry fabric. You could make cuffs. You could add cuffs to an existing garment. You could certainly um, use it to um, make some other items like, like scarves. But what about just dressing up some of your other ready-to-wear, transforming them into you know, souped-up garments that really have star quality? Changing the buttons, we talked about that. How about braid and trim? That would look really gorgeous along these princess seam lines. I could add buttons on the sleeves. I could add tabs. There are so many ways that you can transform ready-mades with your sewing capability and your abilities just by making little, um, little additions. So think about doing those things. Think about dressing up other garments and using your scraps, using your remnants. Transforming garments is just so much fun. You're personalizing and giving it really a look that's totally, completely your own.